Hey, welcome to Walk in the Word TV this morning. For those of you that watch the program regularly, which I hope you do, today we got a pretty unique message, not only because of where it was preached, but also because of who was there. So tell us a little bit about the event. Well, this is the Act Like Men event, and uh, you know, a whole lot of my ministry, as you know, has really been uh, built around uh, reaching men. I did my doctoral thesis on how to get men to be more open about their personal sin, and I've been going around with some of my friends and uh, preaching at these arena events for men, and we're just seeing a massive impact. So uh, you need to probably buckle up. This is pretty intense. This is directed for men, but men and women, we want you to listen in and uh, get the men in your life uh, who need this message uh, tuned in with you. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, please, to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 is, uh, I have spoken so many times from all over God's Word on marriage. Uh, this is a passage of Scripture that I haven't uh, touched upon in our own church for, I think, 11 years. And, um, but it's, it's just so, so helpful. And um, uh, this message is, to be very candid, uh, this message is for men who want an awesome marriage. Uh, this uh, message is for men who are not content uh, with a business as usual. Uh, as I say, turning pages on the calendar, things are fine, things are fine. This, this message is for men who want to feel the sweaty palms, the lump in the throat, I can't wait to be with her, that, that. Men who want it, listen, listen, or men who want it again, uh, men who want it back, Men who want to, if you want it, or if you want it again, uh, this message is for men who want their wife as their closest friend and confidant, who want uh, long walks, who want uh, heartfelt communication and true disclosure. Um, this is for men who want um, to feel the passion and fan the flame and feel the fire that funneled you to the front of the church one time and forced uh, from uh, your lips, the words, I do. Do you really? Do you still? Do you take that woman to be your wife? To have and to hold from this day forward? Here we are on one of those days. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. How's that going? In sickness and in health, hear me, and forsaking all others. Give yourself only to her as long as you both shall live. And having heard uh, the grace of God preached so powerfully in the previous session, would you use that grace of God to step into a fresh season? If uh, you would, um, I'm going to just make it as practical as I can. Do these six things consistently, and it will transform your wife and your marriage. Okay? So when I originally taught this, I called it How to Change Your Wife, because everyone's like, awesome, when can I get that message? <laughs> um, it's actually a trick. So How to Change Your Wife, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, we have How to Change Your Husband, ladies, which is change yourself. And then in verse 7, how come, how come, how come, how come the women get six verses and we only get one verse. It's not because they have more issues. Trust me on that. <laughs> it's because women have questions. They're like, well, can, you know, can you explain that? And can you just tell me a bit more and just follow through? Or is guys just like a super bottom line? Just, can you cut to the chase, please? Yes, I'm about to. All right. One verse for guys. How can you mess this up? <laughs> this, is, this, this whole thing fits on a three by five card, yo. You should be able to get this down. Do, listen to me, do these six things consistently and it will transform your wife because it will change you and it will change your marriage. Um, let me read the verse to you and then we'll go through it a phrase at a time. This message is so clear that nobody is gonna, some guys are gonna leave ticked, but nobody's gonna leave. What was he talking about? It's so clear. Likewise, 
1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. First phrase. Um, well, let me just even get the context before I give you the first one. Likewise, we're going to cover every word here. Likewise. See that there in the text? You see it? Go like this if you see it. See it there? Likewise. So, um, context, as servants are willing to endure hardship for a higher good to please God, chapter 2, verse 20, look at it. Talking to servants, verse 18, verse 20 of chapter 2, what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? If when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So, as servants are willing to endure hardship for a higher good to please God, as, moving down, as Christ endured hardship to achieve a higher good, for to this you have been called, Christ also suffered, leaving an example that you might follow in his steps. Everyone's like, I'm following in his steps. I'm following in his steps. Yeah, following in his steps is in the steps of suffering. It's what it is. And it's enduring the suffering for a higher good. So, he gives the gospel there in the last two verses. Then it moves to wives. Wives have to endure the hardship of being subject to this man for a higher good. So there's the context. So, likewise, like servants, like Jesus, like wives endure suffering for a higher good. Likewise, turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. All right? So likewise, likewise, you men, just like those servants enduring suffering for a higher good, just like Jesus did, just like wives have to. Men, you have to endure the hard parts of marriage for a higher good. And then he gives his instruction. Here they come again, six things consistently that will transform you and your wife and your marriage. First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, here's the first one, live with your wives. Live with your wives. Uh, the idea here is spend time with them. That's what it is. Live with her. Actually, um, the compound verb here uh, translated live with um, uh, NIV says live, New American Standard says live, the New English Bible says conduct your married life. Actually, uh, sunoikeo uh, means to dwell. It's only used here, the only time it's used in the whole New Testament. Uh, it can mean to cohabit, it can refer to uh, the sexual relationship, uh, but most commentators agree that the meaning is deeper than just a physical intimacy. The term encompasses all that married life uh, involves. Now, one commentator said that the nearest English equivalent would be uh, make a home for. Uh, likewise, husbands make a home for, listen, build a life with your wife. Likewise, husbands, uh, build a life with uh, your wife. Now, uh, the issue here uh, is time. Okay? Nothing will transform your marriage like giving time to it. You understand this. If you want to lower your handicap, if you want to have the best lawn on the street, if you want to build an office in the basement, tell me, what's it going to take? It's going to take some time. And, and uh, if, if you want to uh, demolish the competition at work, uh, achieve that promotion, uh, complete that uh, degree as a final a prediction of your future opportunity, all of that is going to take time. What in life is accomplished that is worthwhile that doesn't take time. Nothing will fire up your wife's engine more than a true, genuine experience with the understanding that you want to know her.
Every family has it, but not everyone knows how to handle it. It can divide us and drive us apart, sometimes stretching from one generation to the next. It's conflict, and its effects can be devastating if we don't resolve it God's way. Scripture is full of wise counsel about how to deal with the relational strife every family experiences. We'd love to hear from you today so that we can share these truths while there's still time. Don't let another day go without getting these resources in your hands. For your support of any amount, we will send you Married Happily, a book by Greg Laurie, pastor and friend of James McDonald. Whether you're married already or hope to be someday, this book will pave the way to increased intimacy with your spouse as it shares how to avoid the common pitfalls that lead to conflict within marriage. You'll also receive a DVD full of biblical advice from six couples who have gone the distance in their own marriages and want to help you do the same. Additionally, we will send you a practical booklet that addresses two important family issues, how to honor your parents and how to bless your child. There is something for everyone in this collection, so call or go online and request yours today. Or if you're interested in even more family teaching, we would love to also send you a special 12-message CD set, Family, Loving the Most Important People on Earth. In addition to sharing how to resolve conflict biblically, these messages teach how to get more love in your marriage and more joy in your home. Request the Family Collection today for yourself or someone you care about when you support the ministry with a gift of $110 or more. Just call 800-545-6800 or visit jamesmcdonald.tv. Not <laughs> when I'm saying this, I can, I can uh, sort of hear the collective. So how much time exactly is this going to take? I was talking to a man recently who was um, headed out of town, and it seems like all my interesting conversations come from the golf course. I don't even get to play once a week anymore, but um, um, in this particular instance, uh, this man said to me, he said, I don't, um, I'm kind of upset with my wife. Oh, really? Well, what's wrong? Well, we just had a big fight. Oh, really? Really? What's, what's the problem? She said, well, she always, she's always, like, she's always so upset when I go out of town. And, and I'm like, well, can't, can't she understand, you know, that sometimes that's part of your job? She says, well, this isn't for my job. I said, well, well, he says, but I was out of town all week for my job. I said, all right, well, I understand, so, so where are you going? Well, I'm, I'm going fishing, you know, up in uh, northern Wisconsin and, you know, with, with some friends and, 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 uh, I said, well, you, can't you take her with her? Said, oh, she don't like fishing, you know, and da 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 and then, Okay, so well, why have you planned a trip now if you were just out of town? He's like, well, you know, we didn't catch anything last weekend. <laughs> but, you know, I just have no idea why she's upset. <laughs> I cannot understand this. Gone all weekend, gone all week, gone all weekend again, duh. But we forget stuff, don't we? We're not paying attention, we forget. Like this morning when I left, when the worship was here, I went down to say hi to the guys at Tory Gray Auditorium and I just jumped up to greet them and thank them for being a part of our conference. And when I got up there, I realized that I had left some gum in my mouth. Nobody wants a preacher up on the stage with the gum in my mouth and I didn't really have a place to put it. One guy was in the front row, throw it to me. I was like, nah, I'm probably not gonna do that. So I, I put it in my pocket hang on, hang on, because I knew that I, there was no chance that I would forget that I had put it there. I'm incorrect. I completely and totally forgot that it was there till about 30 seconds ago. That's the life of a man. You're focused on something in the moment, am I right? And then you get off, you get focused on something else, you forgot the first thing. Am I, is this right? The Bible says that we are like a natural man beholding his face in the mirror. And we go our way and we completely forget the man that we were, the man that we were shown to be. 
And so the result of all of that is, is that you can go to a conference and tell some men, you got to spend some time on this, and they'll sit there and they'll get it and they'll agree and, and they'll go home and they'll act like they never heard it. I would challenge you to read, I'm going to challenge you right now to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, seven times a day, every day for 30 days. I'm going to challenge you to jot down these six things and go over them and over them and over them. I challenge them to introduce them to your man-on-man accountability and ask each other about these things. How much time is it going to take? It's going to take uh, this much time. I found that when I give my marriage 15 minutes a day, one evening a week, one day a month, and one weekend a year, 15 minutes a day, one evening a week, one whole day a month, and one weekend a year to focus on nothing but my marriage. And it's not all, calm down, it's not all, you're like, oh my, what are we going to talk about? (laughs) Okay, it's not all navel gazing. You can't picture this like being at Starbucks and are we happy? Go ahead, what don't you like about me? <laughs> uh, most men are not looking forward to that, and, but the problem is they neglect their marriage for so long that the only thing that can get them out of the ditch is some direct frontal assault. All right, you might, and, and then you do that one time and you're like, I'm so looking forward to that in the 2020s. And I'm gonna do that again. And, and, and he's like, no wonder I don't do that. that. But she's had it pent up for so long. Do you hear what I'm saying? And, and so um, it's not all how do you feel about me. Have some fun. Develop some common interests. Watch a movie together and go out for coffee afterwards. Take a class together. The number one currency of our age is time. More than words, more than compliments, more than money to spend. A time is communicating to your spouse. Um, hey, jump in the car and go with me. We can talk on the way. Um, let's, let's do that together. Hey, can we change this plan? A bit? I, I want to spend time with you. I say this to my wife all the time. I want us to be together in this. My wife, she would never show up in this room, but she's at this conference all weekend, and she, just, she wants to be part of it. I'm here giving myself to this, you understand. And we say this frequently. We want to be in this together. And, uh, you know, it's boring to have to do that alone. Come on, and you can help me. And you see it there. Husbands, live with your wives. That's the first thing. Spend time with your wife. Here's the second thing. Study your wife. Study your wife. I'm getting that out of the text. You see it there. Live with your wives in an understanding way. Um, NIV says in a considerate way. New American Standard says understanding. King James says uh, it's actually the most literal, katagnosin. Um, it means um, according to or with knowledge. That's awesome. I love the Word of God. Live with your wife according to knowledge. You're like, what knowledge? Well, the books you've read about marriage, for sure. Um, Pre that, what God's Word says about marriage, the things you've read about marriage, but most importantly, what it's saying, according to the data that you have gleaned in studying that woman. She's, she's, there's an encyclopedia just on her. Someone say amen. Amen. All right. the, the amount of content that a man can learn over time by studying uh, his wife. It, it actually here is the idea of knowledge based on experience. Okay, so it's not an adjective describing knowledge. It means all kinds of knowledge, every kind of uh, in, point of information you can get your hands on. Again, knowledge uh, from God's Word about marriage, knowledge about marriage, women in general, but your wife specifically. Now, I'm not sure why women love to be understood. (laughs) But, T, rust me when I tell you that nothing will fire up your wife's engine more than a true, genuine experience with the understanding that you want to know her. 
that you want to understand her, what she's thinking, why she's thinking it, what she fears, what she's looking forward to, what she's fearful about. Study your wife. Study your wife. Jot these down, six things men would know if they'd study their wives. And number one, if you'd study your wife, uh, you would know that the word nothing uh, means anything but nothing. <laughs> so, honey, 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 what's, what, what's, what's wrong? Nothing. And when she says that, the thing that it most doesn't mean is what she said. If the meaning of her words is the North Pole, she gave you the South Pole to understand. Here's some things I've learned. Now, sometimes nothing means figure it out. Dummy. <laughs> sometimes nothing means nothing I can put my finger on right now. Don't press me about it. Sometimes nothing means nothing to do with you. Sometimes nothing means try a lot harder and I might tell you. <laughs> Sometimes nothing means, do I have to write this in the sky for you? How could you not know? Anybody with me on any of these? All right, so I've been, I've been learning on this. If you don't know all this, I'll look forward to receiving your thank you note in the mail this week. <laughs> Six things men would know if they'd study their wives on uh, number two. Uh, women are bugged by things that guys don't even notice. To me, in the eating experience, you know, a mouthful of food is, good food is pleasurable, but twice as much of that food in my mouth at the same time is twice as, maybe three times as pleasurable. Especially if it's like enchiladas or something. And, and then if, it's, if you get ahead of yourself and it's too hot, that's a problem because having it come back to the plate, that's not good. That is not good at all. That is not, not good. And, and uh, guys, um, um, all of your, I did not understand this when I met her at the front and she had on that beautiful white dress 32 years ago, but I basically was in that moment resigning all attachment to locker room deportment. She doesn't ever want to feel like our bedroom's a locker I love locker rooms. I love being married more. And those two things don't go together. And if you don't know that, Study your wife. Three, um, six things men would know if they studied their wives. Three, romance springs from sacrifice and planning, not from convenience. So, um, I'm sorry is good. I'm sorry and I thought to buy these flowers from the guy standing on the median at the stoplight on the way home. Better. I'm sorry, and the reason I'm 10 minutes late is because I drove out of my way to get to the flower shop that you really like and went inside and found those flowers your sister sent that meant so much to you, and I wanted you to have those again. That's, that's so, so we've got like, you know, golf clapping, and then, then we've got, you know, fine, fine. Like that last one, that's getting closer to standing ovation. And so, um, romance springs from sacrifice and planning. So, hey, let's go on a date. Oh, fantastic, where are we going? I don't know, where do you wanna go? <laughs> and all God's men said? Amen. It's not amen, it's. <laughs> and all God's men said? We're talking about family all month long here at Walk in the Word TV, and we've prepared a special resource to help you in exactly what we've been teaching about today. Watch this. 
For your support of any amount, we will send you Married Happily, a book by Greg Loring, pastor and friend of James McDonald. Whether you're married already or hope to be someday, this book will pave the way to increased intimacy with your spouse as it shares how to avoid the common pitfalls that lead to conflict within marriage. You'll also receive a DVD full of biblical advice from six couples who have gone the distance in their own marriages and want to help you do the same. Additionally, we will send you a practical booklet that addresses two important family issues, how to honor your parents and how to bless your child. There is something for everyone in this collection, so call or go online and request yours today. Or if you're interested in even more family teaching, we would love to also send you a special 12-message CD set, Family, Loving the Most Important People on Earth. In addition to sharing how to resolve conflict biblically, these messages teach how to get more love in your marriage and more joy in your home. Request the Family Collection today for yourself or someone you care about when you support the ministry with a gift of $110 or more. Just call 800-545-6800 or visit jamesmcdonald.tv. If you'd like to become a member of the Walk in the Word family, consider becoming a change partner. Call 1-800-545-6800 or go to jamesmcdonald.tv. Hey, thanks for listening to Walk in the Word today. I know it's not always easy to hear teaching from the Word of God on family. It exposes where we're weak, where there's work yet to be done. But just know this, uh, we've been through a lot mm -hmm. of seasons with our family and faithful is he who has called yes. you. He will also do it, mm -hmm. all right? That's what Paul said to the Thessalonians. That's what we say to you today. Be faithful, stay in the scriptures and wait. You're gonna see God do some awesome things in your family. This program was paid for by the friends and partners of Walk in the Word.